you take a look at almost any Rails application, you're bound to find a destroy link that requires JavaScript for it to work. After all, this is how the simple scaffolding works. So let's uh, destroy this red shirt because that always dies first. And because I have JavaScript enabled, it's going to ask me if I'm sure, and it destroys fine. But now if I disable JavaScript in the browser preferences, and then try destroying a product, it's going to take me to that product's show action. And this behavior can be very confusing to the user. So the big question is, is this really a problem? Pretty much all users have JavaScript enabled. Well, I'm more concerned about cases where the JavaScript doesn't load properly. Perhaps a user is on a slow or flicky connection. And there are also some edge cases where even with JavaScript enabled, if they right click and choose to open in a new tab or window, then it's not going to trigger the JavaScript behavior and fall back to just going to the show action instead of destroying the product. So if this is a concern for you, here I'm going to demonstrate a couple of ways on how you can make this degrade gracefully. But first, let's get a better understanding of how this destroy link works. Now inside of that products index template, I have my destroy link, which goes to that product. And normally this would trigger the show action in the controller, but I'm specifying the method here. So it will send it as a delete request, which will trigger the destroy action. And I also have a data hash here with a confirmation message. Now in earlier versions of Rails, you can just pass in this confirm option and this still works in Rails 3, but in Rails 4, it will be deprecated. So it's recommended to use a data hash if you want to pass in the confirm option. Now, if I view the source of this page, you can see the HTML that it generates. And it's quite simple, just a normal anchor tag with a data confirm and data method attributes. Now these on their own don't do anything special. However, this jQuery UJS file detects those and it turns that link into a delete request when it's clicked on. So without this JavaScript, it's only going to behave as a normal get request. One of the easiest solutions to this problem is to change the link to call to button to, which will use a form that is capable of doing more than a get request. Now when I reload the page, I have a button instead of a link which doesn't look nearly as good, but you can go a long way to improving that with some CSS. I'm just going to paste in some styling to the bottom of this layout SCSS file I have set up, and I'll just paste this in here. And you can see this is going to target the form button two class, which is what is going to be generated by that button two method. And now we're reloading the page. You can see that destroy button is now camouflaged as a link, which may or may not be the best idea. It does behave a little bit differently, but you can go with whatever design works for your application. So let's see what happens when I click on this without JavaScript enabled, let's see if it does a job, and it instantly destroys the product, but it doesn't ask me for a confirmation, so that may or may not work for you. I do really like the simplicity of this button two approach, and if having a confirmation step when there's no JavaScript is important to you, you might want to implement some kind of undo system like I show in episode 255. Now there is a different approach that I'd also like to show you here, it is a little bit more complicated, uh, but this one goes back to using the link to call. And next I'll go into my products controller and add a new action in here called delete, which parallels nicely with the edit and new actions because this will just ask for confirmation for the destroy behavior. And for that, I'm just going to copy the edit behavior because that just fetches the product. And then I'll create a template for this. And I'll just paste in the code for this template. It's quite simple. It just makes a new form for this product and sets a method to delete. So it's going to trigger that destroy action and it asks for confirmation with a submit button or cancel and go back to the list of products. Now we still need some way to access this delete action because it's not set up in our routes. So in our routes file, I'll just add a block in here and add a member block and set get to uh, delete here because it's going to be a git request to ask for the confirmation. And then lastly, I need to change the destroy link in the view so that it points to that products delete action. And I'm going to remove the rest of these options for now so that it behaves the same with and without JavaScript enabled. Now when I visit the products again and click on the destroy link, it just takes me to the simple confirmation page and I can click on destroy here to confirm it. Now what if you only want to fall back to this behavior when JavaScript isn't available? So if we enable it, then we want it to behave some other way. Well, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. One option is to detect this destroy link with some jQuery and strip off the delete portion of the URL and add some data attributes. Uh, another approach that I'm going to show here, it doesn't require any additional jQuery, but brings back the delete and data confirmation attributes on this link call. 
And then going back to my routes file, I'm going to add another route in here to listen for a delete request on that delete action and then map it to the destroy action of that same controller. This doesn't really follow rest, but that delete action isn't true rest either. So I'm just going for what's simple and practical in this situation. So now with JavaScript enabled, if I click on the destroy link, it's going to ask me the confirmation through JavaScript. But if I have JavaScript disabled or open a link in a new window, it's going to fall back to the delete action, which asks me confirmation separately without JavaScript. So this is working great, but what if I have another resource that I want to apply this to as well? For example, this application also has categories which can be destroyed. So how do I keep that same behavior here? Now, while I could copy this delete behavior into the other controller, that's a lot of duplication, which I'd rather avoid. So instead, I'm going to make this delete action more generic so it's not specific to the product. And this means I'll need to change the view template for that delete action. I'm just going to paste in the new code for this Instead of using form4, I'm going to use form tag and stick with the same URL, but submit a delete request. So that will go, be going to the destroy action. And uh, I'm only displaying the cancel link if there's a refer present. So that'll just go back to whatever the refer URL was. And now to share this template with all controllers, it's really simple. I just need to make a new directory under views called application. Since we have an application controller that other controllers inherit from, I can put the template in there and it will be available to all controllers. And next I need to go into any destroy link, such as inside of this categories index template and make it go to that delete action instead of the destroy one. And finally, all we have left to do are the routes. So I could just duplicate this block on each resources call, but that's uh, quite a bit of duplication. So instead I'm going to modify this resources behavior so that it automatically adds these routes. I'm going to do that inside of an initializer file I'll call it a delete a resource a route. And I'll just paste in the code uh, for this. Here I'm defining a module and I'm including that module on the routing mapper, which is where a resources is located. So I'm overriding this resources method and calling super to get the old behavior and passing a block to that. And then I can yield to any additional block that's passed into resources here and call any other resources behavior that I want here, including the member block, which I had in the routes before. So with this in place, any call to resources will automatically have this member block in place. So I don't have to define it. With that in place, you'll need to restart your Rails app. And then if you try destroying a category, you get the JavaScript dialog box. But if you have JavaScript disabled, then click destroy. It falls back and degrades gracefully and shows you that delete template. Now this entire process might have seemed rather complicated, but in the end, you only need three things. You'll need this initializer file to add the delete routes, and you'll need the delete template, which you can put in your application views directory. And anywhere you have a destroy link, just send it to the delete action. And with that, you'll have graceful degradation for destroy links. And don't forget, if you want something simpler, you can just use the button to call instead. Well, that's all I have for this episode. Thanks for watching.